back, everyone, to the second episode of This Person Was Not Dracula. And in this episode, we're going to be talking about Yuri Grando, the Croatian vampire. Yuri Grando lived in Kringa, which is in modern-day Croatia, where he died due to illness in 1656. However, according to local legend, he would rise from his grave at night to terrorize the town as a vampire until he was decapitated in 1672. At night, Yuri Grando would rise up from his grave and knock on the doors of people in the village, and whoever's door he knocked on, the people within the house, would die soon after. His wife claimed that he returned to her and looked like a bloated, smiling corpse and would force himself upon her. The local priest even came across him and thrust a crucifix out in front of himself towards the vampire, begging him to leave him and the town alone. Eventually, the town could take no more, and some of the bravest men in the, in the village went to his tomb with a hawthorn stick in order to pierce his heart. When they thrust open uh, the door of the tomb and uh, took off the lid of the coffin, the, his smiling face frightened them, and they couldn't pierce his, his heart with, with the hawthorn stick. It just bounced off. The, after they ran away, the priest gathered another group of men, and they went and attempted the same thing, but they only had the same result. The hawthorn stick wouldn't penetrate his flesh. So the priest said a few uh, exorcism rites, and the local carpenter cut, cut, cut his head off. Kind of an easy end, I know. Third time's the charm, I guess? Some sources say that it was an axe that they used to cut his head off, but either way, as soon as the blade touched his flesh, the vampire cried out in a grisly scream of horror, and blood spurted everywhere. But after that, town was completely safe, and there was no worries whatsoever. So why have I brought up this story? It's kind of obscure and doesn't seem to have that much to do with Dracula. Well, the people in the town in Croatia have started using it for tourism. Yes, there's a vampire bar in the town, as well as other gimmicky things related to vampires. Yes, the town of Kringa have tried to capitalize off of this for their own benefit. They've also started claiming that he may have been the inspiration for Dracula. This is where my show comes in. <laughs> this is frankly unfounded, to be very polite about it. Grando already has all the characteristics of future literary vampires who appear some 150 years later. He is a cynic, challenges both civil and church authorities, and is sexually active. That's a quote from one Boris Perik, a writer who investigated the issue. He also says that the story was later taken and quoted by various authors, from theologians to historians, and he believes that he served as the inspiration for Bram Stoker's Dracula. So let's see if there's actually any similarities between the two. In no versions of this legend that I've found, and I found a couple, has it ever mentioned that he actually consumes blood, or even flesh. So, saying that he's one of the inspirations for Dracula, that's first first step, that's a little, a little far-fetched, just at the first hurdle. Our Croatian friend here is not actually a vampire, he's a Strigoi, or Strigon. Pardon my pronunciation, I'm not Croatian. Generally, but not always, the closest Strigoi type to vampire, and the one that he fits into is the Strugoi Mor, Mort. I'm not French either. The definition of this is as follows. Its nature is ambiguous, both human and demonic. He or she emerges from their grave, returns to their family, and behaves as in their lifetime, while weakening their relatives until they die in their turn. So if anything, this Croatian tale is just a classic version of the old Eastern European and Balkan legend of the Strugoi. Claiming that this specific case inspired Dracula is just very, very far-fetched. And in summarization, this person was not Dracula. As much as this writer and these people running this bar in, in this town want people to think it was the inspiration of Dracula so they can rake in that tourist money, it's an interesting story, but it's not the inspiration for Dracula. You can't claim every vampire is the inspiration for Dracula. It would be like if a new superhero came out and people claimed that any superhero was the inspiration for it. You can't be that specific, because it's the, the sum of the parts. You can't say this specific thing was the inspiration for Dracula, this specific thing for his inspiration for Dracula. It was a lot of thing combined with Bram Stoker's own childhood trauma and ideas. This kind of takes a little bit away from the writer to just say that he's this he, he brought all this from one thing. A lot, lots of it were from his own imagination, and people might try constantly to be able to take that writer's imagination and use it for monetary gain outside of uh, fiction. But oftentimes it's just bullshit. Thank you for continuing to watch my gothic horror and fantasy videos. I know this was a short one. Um, I'm trying to do, like, 
but I, I do videos every week, but I think every second week I'm going to do a shorter one like this one. Like two weeks ago I did my Gilles de Ray video and that was under 10 minutes and this, this one will probably be under 10 minutes as well unless I make this post amble quite long. And because I've started college, uh, I might slow down. I want to keep on doing the weekly uploads because they're very successful. Like each, um, a lot of them are breaking 100 views, which is good for me considering I have under 100 subscribers. Oh, just barely, just barely under. Uh, I'm going to invest in a microphone so I can talk over pictures rather than uh, videoing it because that is, videoing it is one of the things that takes up quite a lot of time because I have to set up and retake. Like I, have a, I had to take this video a couple times because I kept on messing up the beginning. <laughs> And I think if I was just recording it, I could do it at night. Uh, if I don't have a light, I can do it. Which So as soon as I get a microphone, I'll definitely be able to continue to do the weekly content. But up until I get that, I'm not sure if I'll be able to continue doing weekly content. Any suggestions for things for me to talk about, please leave it in the comments. It always helps for people to leave suggestions. I've already taken some on board. Um, it basically means I don't need to think as hard during the week about what I'm going to do on Friday and Saturday for my video. I have no idea what I'm going to talk about next week because I'm only three quarters of the way through Dracula. Um, I'm reading it slower than I normally do because I want to absorb the information properly so I can make a decent video. That review will probably be out by mid-October, but don't quote me, it depends. I have a feeling these videos will start doing better as soon as the season of spook comes around properly, as soon as October starts, but maybe that's just me wishful thinking. Just just my wishful thinking. Jesus, I even fuck up the post amble that's not really scripted. God. Please like, subscribe, share the video with people you think will like it because it really helps out the channel. That's how we grow, is how well, we, I, how I grow is by it being shared and people liking it and all that sort of thing. Because YouTube, I'm too small for YouTube to recommend me to people, it's just off of sharing. And I'm almost at 100 subscribers. If I made that, that would be a great late birthday present. And always remember to turn your wife into an unwilling necrophile. That's what you should take away from this episode. I, that was a bit. I didn't. I didn't dwell on that part of the story. It was kind of, kind of eerie. That was the one. That, mm, zombie rapists.